Welcome. Like I said, today's presentation is on ergonomics. We will have a short demonstration kind of in the middle of our presentation today. So I, you'll see my face again instead of the PowerPoint. So like I said, my name's Carrie. So a little bit about what we'll be going over today. We're gonna to look at what is ergonomics? Why is it important to consider? Some of the common postures we'll see, especially when working from home, um, and then some of the common ailments, and we'll go over lots of tips and tricks to improve your home workspace to make it comfortable for your body. One thing I do want to highlight before we even really dive in is that a lot of these tips and tricks will be different for each person. So you might need to try one or two things before finding the thing that will fit perfectly for your body. All of our bodies are different. All of our home setups are different. So I'm going to give you a couple of different ways to set it up. So if one thing doesn't work for you, there might be something else that works for you as well. Awesome. So just a little bit about me. The reason um, I really love talking about ergonomics is because I've seen from a physical therapy standpoint, a lot of posture related aches and pains, discomforts. And I really believe it's important to look at the whole body so that we can best help you feel good and work best in your home environment. And then from my yoga instructor perspective, I've learned a lot of different ways to breathe, stretch, use re relaxation techniques so that you can relieve those common discomforts and aid in just overall physical and mental performance. So what is ergonomics? It's the study of people's efficiency in their working environment. And specifically for today's topic, looking at your physical environment and how it's affecting your mind and body. So I'm sure some of you have been this person on the left before trying to do a couple different things at once. And while that is not a bad thing at all, we really wanna look at our posture and your work from home space and how to set up your home office so that you can achieve all your work goals and prevent pain, injury, and discomfort while doing so. The last thing we want is to be working so hard um, and our setup just be not ideal and discover that we have aches and pains along the way. So a couple of reasons why it's really important to improve your work from home space is really the obvious. So decreasing discomfort in your neck, low back, upper back, and then other things such as decreasing discomfort in your shoulders, knees, and hips that we might not always relate to our homework setup or our work setup, but can actually come from different postures um, while working. If you think about it, when you're sitting down for a day at work, you're usually spending a couple hours there. So your positioning can really affect how your whole body feels, not just your neck or your back, but your shoulders, knees, hips, wrists, all of that stuff is affected when we sit at our computer or at our desk for a long period of time. The added bonus is that by improving our work from home setup, you can also improve your concentration, your work performance, and then of course, prevent any injury or pain. And you'll see kind of on the right hand side here um, that there's a couple different work from home setups and we'll, we'll talk about that as we go along as well. So these are some common painful neck postures that I see a lot in practice. So obviously I exaggerated these a little bit for the sake of the pictures, but a lot of times people will have their head forward, which can really increase pressure on the back of your spine in those vertebrae of your spinal column. Their head will be down, which will create some tension in the front of the neck and an extra stretch on the back of the neck. And the common one that I see that most people don't even realize is that head turned to one side. This is especially common if you have multiple screens. And this might apply to some people and not to other. But when you're working on multiple screens and your main screen happens to be your screen on the left hand side, that might cause you to turn your head completely to the left for a good hour or so, which can then cause some stretch on the right-hand side and a lot of compression, a lot of tension on the left-hand side. This probably is the one I see the most, mostly because people don't realize they're doing it. And we'll talk about common ways to get around this in just a moment. So these are just a few of the neck positions that I see that end up causing some discomfort in um, a variety of people. 
So then some common back, painful back postures. So this might be your upper back or your low back, but the first one really is rounding forward. And I'll show you um, in the demonstration what all these look like in action, but rounding forward can cause a lot of compression on the front side of your body and really over lengthen the back side of your body and create some muscle strain there. Another huge thing I'll see is people leaning off to one side, which can create a lot of pressure on that uh, say you're leaning to the right side, that right hip, elbow, shoulder, especially if you're leaning all of your weight onto one armrest or one side of your desk. The other really common one here is being seated really far forward so that you're really sitting more on your sacrum, um, your tailbone area, and or even sitting on your low back. That will cause a huge C curve along your back. Um, and it's not bad if you're sitting there for a couple of seconds, but picture staying in that spot or being curled up in a ball for a long period of time. That just creates a lot of pressure through some structures that aren't ready to handle that structure. And like I kind of mentioned briefly just a moment ago, these are just some common postures I see. This is not the end all and be all. And if you find yourself in one of these postures for a short period of time, it's not a bad thing. One of my favorite mentors always said, it's not a certain posture that's the problem. It's that we stick into these postures for an extended period of time. So it's not that sitting is bad, it's that you're sitting for a couple hours at a time and not changing position, or that you're rounded forward for a couple hours of time and you're not relieving the back from that tension or switching the areas of tension. So it's when we get set up into a position and we stay there for a long period of time that can cause some of these aches, pains, and discomforts. I don't want you thinking that just, you know, shifting to one side for a couple moments is going to cause an injury. It won't necessarily, but if you lay, if you're sitting there for a long period of time, it can just cause some discomfort. And we'll talk about all sorts of ways that we can relieve and alleviate some of these common discomforts. So as we kind of went over very briefly, some of the common pain points you'll see um, if your work setup isn't ideal is low back, mid back, neck, shoulders, wrists, hips, knees. And just because I didn't mention a body part here doesn't mean you might not have discomfort there, but this is just what is commonly seen and what we'll really address today. So the ideal work from home setup, what does that look like? Like I mentioned, this is going to look different for each person, and that's totally fine. This is actually a picture of myself in my home office, um, and as you can notice, I have a pillow underneath my bum. That pillow helps me stay a little bit elevated and helps relieve some pressure on my low back and sacrum. Um, couple quick tips here just to list them out. You really want to make sure your computer screen is directly in front of you so your eyes can be on the computer, your neck is in neutral, and you can look straight ahead. That is probably my number one tip for people. And then the second one is elbows that are approximately 90 degrees. You can see here that my elbows are extended a little bit. That actually felt good for me because I was able to sit up nice and tall. If I got a little bit closer to the computer, my elbows would bend a little bit more. There's actually one tweak I would make to this computer, and I'll share that with you in just a second, or just computer setup. The other thing I really like to look at is what's going on at the hips and knees. Commonly, people will cross their legs, and like I said, that's not bad if you do it for a couple of moments. But to really have a firm setup, you want your feet flat on the ground, your knees at about a 90 degree angle, which usually ends up being even with the hips. And then that sets your lower body up. And then if you need to shift side to side, that's totally fine. For me in this chair in particular, placing that pillow underneath my bum helps elevate my hips so I have a more comfortable position in my knees and hips. So that's an easy tweak and we'll get into a couple more of those in a moment, but that's an easy tweak to get you better set up. The other piece that I added on at the end here is supporting the low back. I don't have low back support right there, but sometimes it can be really helpful to place it a pillow behind your low back. And like I said, I'll show you that into the demonstration as well. 
So I'd be curious if anyone guessed some of the common tweaks, uh, the common tweak that I'd make here. Um, and that would be, I would elevate my screen just a little bit so that my computer screen is at eye height. And I'll show you a couple ways you can do that in just a moment. So the good stuff, the how to. Let's go over some objects you can use and then I'll show you what that looks like in practice. So common things you'll find around the house, right? We're all working from home. Um, we not, might not have the perfect ergonomic setup, high to low table, and that's okay. There's plenty of things that you can use. Um, for me, I have a ton of old textbooks from physical therapy school. So you can stack some textbooks either under your laptop or even under your monitor screen to elevate your screen so that's at eye height. Um, it could be any size textbooks. I'll use a couple of textbooks to get the right height. Um, another thing that you can use are boxes. So if you've had any food deliveries, any you know, just supply deliveries, an empty box um, upside down can create that elevated surface as well. The boxes I also like is because you can stack a couple of big boxes and you can turn your seated desk into a standing desk really easily. Another common way to use books or boxes is to create a footrest. So if you're um, a little bit shorter or your chair's a little bit higher, you can stack books or boxes underneath your feet to place your foot feet as a footrest, um, which can be really helpful if you don't have the choice of getting a different chair. The other common household items that you can use are pillows or blankets. So as you noticed in the last picture, I placed a pillow underneath my bum. You can place a pillow behind your low back or even behind your upper back. I also like to use big thick blankets either rolled up in a little circle under my bum or even between my shoulder blades if I feel like I need a little support in my upper back. And once again, I'll show you all the different ways to use this in a moment. So let's dive into the demonstration and then we'll get into a little bit more of that. So I'm just gonna stop sharing my screen for a moment um, and set up my computer so you guys can see my desk. And just give me one moment to tilt this forward. Pause, share, awesome. Let me get out of here, excuse me. There we go, so. I'm going to tip myself down so you can see my desk setup. So this is my desk here. So I'm going to use books at first. So let's talk about the monitor first. You can use textbooks of all different heights to either elevate your monitor or your keyboard. So normally I would elevate the monitor so that I'm looking straight ahead. A lot of times we'll be looking down because the laptop monitor goes to about here. If you stack some textbooks up, that can give you the visual that you need here. So you notice here, I have two textbooks here. Depends on the size of your textbook, you can use all different sizes and thicknesses. But that's my number one tip for setting up. That will prevent two things, the head forward and the head down. By elevating my monitor, I will be able to look straight ahead so that my screen's right here. This is very common with laptop use as well because it's not a monitor, it's a laptop and our keyboard and laptop are connected. Another thing that you can do with that laptop if you have the option is to get a separate keyboard so that the keyboard is here but the monitor is here. So you can elevate the screen separately from your keyboard. If that's, not a, if that's not an option, you can elevate the whole laptop and then rest your elbows on the desk and type from here. That causes a little compression on your forearm, but it's better than looking completely down into your lap there. I'm gonna tip you down to look at my feet really quickly here. I'm just going to put a better light on my feet. So there you go. When I'm sitting in this chair, you want to adjust the chair height 
without the desk at first. So you wanna scoot yourself back and make sure that your feet can be firmly on the ground. If you're too high up and your feet are dangling, that's not gonna give you the support that you need there. So if I was like this, that causes a lot of pressure on my hips and back because my feet are hanging there. So if you have an adjustable chair, you can just bring it down so your feet are flat. And then it's hard to see in this black here, but I'll scooch forward here. You can see my knees and hips are in line right there. If, say that's not an option, and your chair is really high, you can then take a textbook or a box and place your feet on the textbook. That way I bring the floor to me instead of bringing the chair to the floor. Awesome. So that's for the feet there. I want to talk a little bit about the back now. So I'm going to adjust my chair so my feet are firmly on the ground. And I'm going to take a pillow now. You're going to take a pillow and place it along your low back like that. That can create some nice lumbar support, especially if you want to lean back a little bit and you don't have a supportive chair. Another way you can do it, say this feels like a little bit too much on your upper back, and I'm going to tip my screen just an inch so that you can see. There we go. Here, you can turn it horizontally, and that will support mostly your low back. So if you feel like your low back's causing some discomfort, it can be nice to have the pillow at your low back, but have your shoulders free to move there. And I will be completely honest with this pillow setup that it really depends on the person there. And you might want to play around, and this is going to sound silly, but with the thickness of the pillow as well. Sometimes super fluffy pillows will cause um, not enough space for your bum on the chair. So horizontally supports the low back more. Vertically will support the whole spine. I'm going to show you two other options right now to support the upper and lower back. So let me just grab those. One thing that can be really helpful is a towel or a blanket, I should say. So the first way that you can use a blanket is you can just fold it into squares like so. And then place it once again that horizontally at your low back. It can create that, that support there. I notice with blankets more so than pillows that I need to lift them up and then scooch back so that they're really supporting that natural curve of my spine really nicely. Another thing you can do with blankets, say you have a chair at home that's one of those harder kitchen chairs, it can be a little tough on the bum sometimes. So you can place a blanket underneath your bum to support your sits bones and your thighs. You notice that that elevates me a little bit. So I might need to then adjust my chair or place a textbook underneath my feet. So all of these adjustments work together. So if I adjust the height of my chair, I might need to adjust the height of my monitor. I have another really silly, but also really useful um, tool, I should say, for setting up your low back. If anyone has any children's at home and you have any deflated playground balls, this might sound silly, but sometimes those can create the best support for your low back. So the ball is just right in the middle of my low back supporting the natural curve so that my back is feeling really nice there. Um, a little deflation in the ball, so you can see it squishes a little bit, can be really nice for that. One last quick thing for a demonstration, and this is more for upper back discomfort, is if you have a long blanket like so, you can roll it up and you can place it along your back the long way. So this might require a little bit more setup and maneuvering, but you can put it right in the middle of the chair and you can lean back like so. That supports the whole length of your spine if you're having some mid back or upper back discomfort. One thing I would caution on here is how much space you have in your chair. 
So if you have a chair that's not super wide, that's a little bit thinner, this might push you a little too far forward. And if you have any questions on all these tools, please drop them in the comments and I will, I will get to them at the end. So these are just a couple of tools that I have around with me. But like I said, you can use boxes, empty boxes. You can use couch pillows. You can use all of that good stuff. Another common one that people will use um, is a yoga block if you have those at home or any of those yoga props as well. So we're gonna dive back into the presentation. I'm gonna share my screen. Let me just do this. Beautiful. Share my screen. Alrighty guys. Oh, so my PowerPoint skipped ahead, <laughs> but that's okay. So some other really great tips and tricks that can help set up your desk and help you just feel better in your body as you start to set up your home office or, or fix it up. Um, one is taking breaks from the top of the hour. So there, there's research out there that shows that we work best in kind of 45, 50 minutes at a time and taking even a two minute break can really improve our productivity. That also helps decrease any discomfort in our body, whether that's moving around, um, whether that's just aches and discomfort. So for you, depending on how your house is set up, obviously some, some houses are more than one floor, some aren't, it might mean just walking to the farthest bathroom. Might be go get a glass of water. If you have the safety of stepping outside for a moment, that can be helpful. You may even just get up and wash your hands because safety first. <laughs> Another really helpful thing is to stretch a little bit. And there'll be a secret slide coming up next, but stretching in your chair, standing up and taking a full body stretch, all that can be really helpful. Other things that can be really helpful for sitting your desk for long periods of time for your overall just aches and pains is hydrating. A lot of times I find people sit at their desk for long periods of time, they're not drinking a ton of water, they're not getting up to the bathroom, and that just causes a little bit of stiffness in the body that we can always prevent. Another common complaint I find is neck pain for people who have to be on the phone a lot. So if you have the capability of being on speakerphone in your home office, it's better for your neck and shoulders if you can put the phone on speakerphone right in front of you. If for privacy reasons or sound reasons that's not possible, you can always use a headset or you can just hold the phone to your ear. The common complaint with neck pain is when people are using the, to pin the phone between their ear and their shoulder. That can cause some tension in the neck. The last really important tip and trick here is to change positions often. So this might be an option for you, this might be not. But if you have a couple different places you can work in your home or a couple different ways that you can work, this can be really helpful. So it might be as simple as working from seated for an hour and then elevating your monitor and work from standing. As silly as it might sound, they might even be getting on the floor, sitting on the floor, but still elevating your monitor and sitting there. It might be even just changing your desk height. It might be changing the type of chair you're in. Little changes over the course of the day can really help our body feel better. The most important thing to remember when working from home is that it's a different setup. So it might take you a couple moments to get settled into what feel good, feels good for you and your body, but it's changeable and you can always tweak it a little bit to make it feel good for you. So a little bonus here, some seated stretches that you can do from home in your chair. So these might seem really simple, but just adding a different movement into your body and into your workday can go a really long way. I am a huge believer in a little bit of something is better than nothing. So if that means just wiggling around in your chair or stretching for a couple moments, that can go a really long way to decreasing discomfort in your body. So these are just some examples, taking a gentle twist in your chair, taking a little side bend. I personally like reaching my arms up to the sky and then reaching over to one side, reaching back up, and then the other, 
And then the last one you see is a seated forward fold. Not all these stretches are perfect for everyone. So I recommend that you move slowly, mindfully, and that you're breathing the whole time. If you feel like you have to hold your breath to complete any of these stretches, it's usually a sign that it's a little bit too intense for your body. But just adding these gentle stretches into your daily routine can help the setup of your desk immensely. You notice here as well that I had to move my chair out to complete those. That's probably for the best. It also causes me to change positions there. So that is the end of our presentation for today. And let me just pop my face back on here so you guys can see me. Alrighty, so I'm gonna pop through all the questions in the chat first, but if anyone has any questions, please feel free to pop them in. Awesome, let me just look at this chat. Beautiful. Understandable, so the question here is, you know, raising your laptop and then you're shrugging your shoulders up and that causes a lot of neck discomfort. Um, for me with that shrugging, some of it is tension as well. I would add a lower box or book in front of the box that the laptop's on. That can be really helpful to kind of rest your elbows on. So a lot of times when we elevate something, and, th and this is kind of the, the tricky part of working from home because we have to play around a little bit, um, is that we make one adjustment and then we find that there's another common area of discomfort. So if you elevate your laptop and then your elbows, I'm just gonna pretend like this, my laptop's up here, your elbows are floating or they're digging really heavy into the desk, that can cause some discomfort in the elbows or shoulders. So if you're elevating your laptop, one of my favorite things to actually do, and this might sound really silly once again, is to fold up like a dish towel or a small towel and place that in front of my laptop so I have a soft surface to rest my forearms and elbows on. Does that make sense? And then in terms of the shrugging the shoulders up, I'd encourage you to check in with your body here. So if your laptop is super elevated and you're up like this, can you keep your eyes up but then relax your shoulders? Shrug up and lean back things like that. Um, a lot of times when our shoulders are up, it's not necessarily the height. It's that as humans, we're used to, okay, I got to reach up. I got to bring my shoulders up. But just taking a big exhale to release those shoulders away from the ears can be really helpful. Awesome. Good. I'm glad that that worked. Um, if there's any clarification you need on any of my examples as well, please, please, please feel free to ask. Um, the next question, if I have to lean forward to better see my laptop screen, should I try to get a larger display screen? That's a great, great question. Um, my question there would be, is it that the screen's too blurry or is it dark um, or is it that it's just too far away? A bigger screen can definitely help with that, but also adjusting the screen so that it's head on can help. I find, um, and this might just be my personal experience, so if it's not yours, please drop it in the chat and I can address that as well, that I'm usually leaning forward when my screen is too far below me and I'm, say I'm sitting in my, on my couch and I'm rounding forward, because of the glare of the screen, I have to get really close to see it. So making sure, and I'm just gonna move my screen so you can kind of see that I'm either tipped up enough or equal enough that I can see my screen really clearly. A larger screen can also help with that. Or positioning yourself so that you can sit a little forward in your chair and still be really supported. So say, I'm gonna turn sideways here. Say you're leaning forward to look at your screen. It might be more useful to stack, and I'm just gonna take my blanket for now, pillows and blankets behind you so that you're sitting a little far forward, but you're still supported by a surface beneath you and that can bring you a little bit closer to your monitor there. And like I said, if anything doesn't make sense, just pop it in the comments. Alrighty, next question. I'm getting pain at my lower back when lying down for sleep at night. Is this due to bad seating position during the day? So I'm gonna say what everyone hates to hear, and it depends, but 
With that said, I do think adjusting your seating position can help with low back pain. So a couple things I'd encourage you to ask yourself and just check in. Um, one, are you getting up throughout the day and going for like, I'm talking a little walk around your desk. Are you stretching throughout the day? Those are, that's one question. Second question, um, does your low back bother you while you're seated? If so, can you adjust your seated position so your low back feels better? Sometimes when we're just, we're having pain at night, that can be an accumulation of a lot of things throughout our day. So it might not just be just the sitting. It might be sitting plus a household task you have to do or sitting plus your exercise routine. But if we can take away those variables in our home office setup and tweak those so that we feel best there, it can help us better, better figure out where that discomfort's coming from. A huge thing with low back pain and seated that I briefly mentioned um, earlier is sitting on a softer surface. So if you're sitting on a kitchen chair, that doesn't really absorb so, uh, force well. So if you're sitting on a hard wood or plastic chair, that's a lot of, not a lot of give there and is putting a lot of pressure on your whole spine. If you're lucky enough to have a chair that's soft, that can be really helpful. Or like I said, you can put a pillow or blanket underneath. The other flip side to that is if your surface is too soft, that can cause you to slouch a little bit. So playing with the type of sleep seated surface and the amount of give there is can be really, really helpful for the low back, especially. Um, and if there's any other specific uh, setups for low back, please feel free to pop it in the comments. And then the next question, should I use a rolled up towel in my, in my lower back in my chair? I don't have a great chair. Great question. No, no worries. That is a great question. Um, I find that the towel can be a little bit easier because like I said, pillows are all different shapes and sizes. So they can be really big or they can be really small. So rolling up a, a blanket or a towel, um, can you can make it the size that you want it exactly. Unless you find the perfect pillow, then go for it. But by using a towel, it can support that natural curve of your spine. We want a little bit of curve in our low back. That's how we're naturally built. So by supporting that with a towel, or I was joking that the, or not joking, but that a child's playground tall can be, tall, ball, can be really helpful for supporting a natural curve in the low back. So definitely a rolled up towel in your lower back can really help for a chair that's a little bit stiffer. Awesome. Alrighty, on to the next question. I love all these questions, guys. Thank you so much. Um, I have a burning pain in my left shoulder that began when I started working from home at a dining room table with a wooden chair. I now work at a computer desk with a padded dining chair and still have this pain, but it's lessened. That's a great question. So it, 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 it's good that it's lessened, right? So you made some adjustments and it lessened. That's a good sign that your work setup probably was contributing to that discomfort. The tough thing there um, is that once we feel pain and discomfort, it might take a little bit while for it to go away. So even though you sound like you've set up your chair and your home workspace, awesome. So really props to you on that. Um, but by adjusting it, that's one step. So then making sure that you're moving through your full range of motion can be really helpful. So that might mean just making sure you're getting up. That might mean make sure you're, you are like gently moving. If it continues, um, I would definitely recommend seeing a physical therapist or an orthopedic doctor um, just to make sure that there's nothing else that you can do there. They can give you simple stretches, um, exercises, things like that to maintain this kind of progress you've had. But it does sound like it was your chair setup, um, especially since that improved when you changed your chair setup. The last little piece I will say there is just making sure um, that when you change your chair position, um, that it still feels good to the other areas of your body and it, it, it enables you to move better in your body. Awesome, of course. So I put my laptop back and on the textbook, tilted to 45 degrees and then my screen is on eye level. Yeah, beautiful. That's a great, a, a great adjustment as well. If you have a, a, a wide enough desk, and I'll kind of show um, this, I'm on my laptop. So they're talking, the person is talking about tilting it here and then tilting their screen up. So that puts their 
their monitor right in front of them and the keyboard at an angle. That's a really great adjustment as well. Depending on your laptop, it might like, so if I, I'm holding my laptop and I'll just show it will, mine will slide a little bit. So you can always put another text or another, like even like a little rolled up towel in front of the laptop. So it doesn't slide towards you. Um, or even, um, have you, you guys might've seen at the office too, they have the keyboards with like the little soft cushion at the end. Those cushions can prevent a laptop from sliding a little bit, but that's a really great suggestion. Thank you for sharing that. Awesome. Any other questions or anything else um, that you guys want me to review um, that I went over earlier, please feel free to pop it in and let me know or if there's a slide that you'd like to see again. Awesome. Yeah, of course. You're welcome. Well, I'm here for questions. I do want to share just one thing really quickly um, for you guys so that you know. Um, this, the link for this webinar will be provided to the employer groups within one to two days and will be accessible for one week after today. So if you need, um, if you want to review anything, it will be in there. Um, we're also looking forward to seeing you next week for the importance of recovery, where we'll go over what recovery really means, the importance of recovery, and how to add simple habits, hacks, rituals, and routines to Im improve your recovery and therefore improve your performance mentally and physically. So that will be a lot of fun next week, and I hope to see you guys there. But like I said, I'm going to be sticking around for at least another couple of moments, and if anyone has any last-minute questions, feel free to pop them in. I am happy to answer them. And if I don't have, you know, the exact answer, I can direct you to the right source. Thank you for joining me so much, guys. It was a pleasure having you all here. You're welcome. Bye, everyone. Beautiful, we have another fun question coming in. Anything to do to release shoulder pain? Um, so I'll start with, once again, it depends. I know that's a really frustrating answer, so I apologize in advance, um, but I would explore you to just check in with what is causing the shoulder pain. So are you noticing it more at work? Are you noticing it more during activity? Are you noticing more when you're sleeping, when you're moving versus not? All of that can give you some clues as to what's going on there. In terms of specifically your work setup, one thing I find with shoulders, and I'm gonna tip my screen down a little bit, is that if your arms are hanging too much down by your side, that causes a lot of tension. So say you have to lean forward or your desk, your keyboard's really low, that can cause a lot of tension on the shoulder there. So that one thing is making sure you're sitting up tall and that you're using your muscles to support your shoulders or you're resting your arms on a surface. That would be my first thing for kind of just making sure your shoulder's feeling better. Um, and then making sure once again, the keyboard and the monitor at a good height. A lot of times the neck and shoulder and arms, that's all really connected. So adjusting one thing can affect the other. So bringing in, if you're adjusting your monitor, make sure you're changing the position of your arms, whether that's a towel, whether that's a textbook, whether that's just elevating, um, resting your arms on something. If it persists, I would definitely recommend um, either talking to a physical therapist or a doctor just to make sure there's nothing else going on there. Awesome. Thank you for that question. Yes, I can review arm position one more time, totally. Um, so I'm gonna turn to the side just so you guys can see me better from this position. So we're gonna pretend like there's a desk in front of me. So if I'm sitting, I'm gonna lower this just a little bit so you can see the edge of here. So for me in this chair, I can comfortably rest my arms on this chair without leaning too far or without my arms being too far. So if, say my torso was a little bit shorter and my arm, I had to kind of like slump forward to get my arms on the armrest, that can cause a lot of pressure on my back and shoulder. If your 
you say your torso is a little bit shorter and it's too low, you could act as this, once again, might sound silly, but these are all like really just household things that can work. Wrap a dish towel or two around your armrest to elevate your armrest. Some chairs have the armrest that you can elevate, but mine don't. So I recommend honestly wrapping a couple of dish towels around the armrest so that you can lift it up and bonus, it's softer there. If I was resting my hands on a desk, I would want to make sure that the desk isn't too low so I'm not reaching down or too high that my arms are too high. You want your shoulders relaxed. I'm going to tip myself up just a little bit again. I want my shoulders relaxed so that they're away from my ears. My elbows at about 90 degrees, maybe a little bit straighter. And I personally really like resting my forearms on the desk. So I'll frequently put a towel under my forearms so that it's a softer surface than the wood. That way I can tap freely and my shoulders are away from my ears, therefore releasing any tension in the kind of upper neck, upper trap area. I hope that helps. Of course, any other last minute questions? We still have a couple of minutes. Thank you guys for all your amazing questions. I really enjoyed answering them. So like I said, I am here for a couple of moments. If you have any questions. Of course, thank you for joining.